The top 10 players ranked on the New York Jets roster right now. What's up, everybody? Hopefully, very soon, within the next 72 hours, we're going to have some new big names on the New York Jets. But as our roster sits right now, who are the 10 best players repping green and white? Let's get right into it. Honorable mention goes to one Carl Lawson, defensive end. Loved the signing last year, came over from the Bengals, was dominating training camp, and then the tragic Achilles tear. That's one of the toughest injuries to come back from, especially from a player who relies on that explosive athleticism. However, his reputation still earns him the honorable mention spot here. I'm hoping he'll come back strong and be a good presence off the edge for the New York Jets that maybe they could pair with another bookend edge rusher in this year's draft. Jumping into the top 10, number 10, Corey Davis, wide receiver. A little more disappointed with Corey Davis. Even when he was on the field, it didn't really seem like the wide receiver one that maybe the Jets thought that they were paying for. But he's still a really good number two, a big bodied wide receiver, good in the red zone, has some nice yak ability, but struggled with some drops last year. Number nine, running back Michael Carter. What a steal in the fourth round. From the second he jumped on the field, he looked like our number one running back. I love his quickness, I love his ability as a receiver. He runs really, really hard and strong for a player of his size, and I think the Jets might want to pair him with a bigger, bruising running back, but he could definitely be our running back one for the future. Number eight, Elijah Vera Tucker, offensive guard. Really solid move to trade up and draft this kid. He's going to be our plug-and-play left guard for the next decade. Didn't show the dominance that some of the scouts were projecting that he would, but a pro football focus grade, approaching 70, really solid for a rookie, has to clean up some penalties, but definitely going to be a above average starter for a very long time in this league. He's number eight. Number seven, an offensive lineman we took the year before. Offensive tackle Makai Becton has the talent to probably be the best player on our roster, but just like Lawson is coming back from an injury and he only played in one game the entire season. The injury didn't heal the way that we anticipated. However, I feel like Makai Becton still has elite franchise level left tackle potential, and I'm excited for him to unleash it this year. I foresee him taking over the left tackle spot and George Fant going back over to right tackle. We have to ask ourselves this question. If Makai Becton, the prospect, was coming out in this year's draft, would he even be there at four when the Jets are on the clock? I don't think so. I think he'd be in play for the number one overall pick. He's number seven. Number six, Quinnen Williams, defensive interior. And I know Jets fans are not happy with how he's produced given the fact that he was a top three overall pick. However, there's no arguing that he's one of the six best players on our roster. He's been a guy who can get six to eight sacks a year. He's tough against the run. He'll get pressures. He hasn't had a lot of help around him in terms of the pass rush, so he's been doubled and triple teamed. Again, a player of that caliber, caliber you're hoping can go ahead and produce even when they're facing double and triple teams. We'll see if Quinnen finally has his breakout year this year. He had a nagging calf injury last season. Maybe this is the year he finally breaks out. He's number six. Number five, quarterback Zach Wilson. And I'm projecting a little bit here. Obviously, he wasn't one of the top five players at his position last year, but I think moving into the 2022 season, he absolutely will be one of our top five players. Elite arm talent plus athleticism. And I think with some more weapons around him, another year with the same offensive coordinator, he's really going to take off. That last stretch of six games, he was the highest rated rookie in the NFL, finished the season with over four straight games, turnover free, was making quicker decisions, getting the ball out of his hands quickly, going through his reads, taking the checkdowns or the layups, as Coach Sala would say. And I think he's going to carry that positive momentum into next season when he has some more legit NFL talent around him. Number four, Bryce Hall, cornerback. Our standout defensively this year, we gave up a ton of yards, but not a lot of those were the faults of Bryce Hall. I think he has CB1 potential. At worst, he's a really, really good cornerback number two. He's long. He got his hands on a ton of passes. He was a willing tackler, 
and was by far our best guy in coverage last season, which was only his second year. Looking forward to what he can do in year three, Bryce Hall is number four. All right, jumping into the top three New York Jets. Number three, CJ Mosley, linebacker. Is he worth that monstrous cap hit? Probably not, but he's still a really good middle linebacker, a really great leader in the locker room, and the type of guy who has respect around the NFL that I think could be uh, someone who could help us bring in some other free agents. CJ struggled in pass coverage last year, but it seemed like he was just trying to do everybody's job. The linebackers to the left and to the right of him were not very good. The safeties behind him were not very good. The defensive front four in front of him struggled to get pressure. So it seemed like he was trying to play a little bit of hero ball and got at, caught out of position. At times, I think with the Jets making significant upgrades to their defensive roster this offseason, CJ will have a little bit of a bounce back year. Still, still one of the top 10 off-ball linebackers in the NFL. Next. Number two, Elijah Moore, wide receiver. And maybe I'm putting too much stock into that four or five game stretch when he was one of the best receivers in the league for about a month production wise. But I think that's the wide receiver we're going to see next year on a game by game basis. I think he's going to have a thousand yard season. I'm looking forward to LaFleur using him on end arounds and sweeps, giving us a couple hundred yards on the ground and maybe a couple touchdowns there as well. A really versatile weapon. I think the Jets are going to upgrade at outside wide receiver, putting Elijah Moore in his more comfortable slot position. Number one, this is going to surprise a lot of people, but I think that the best player at their position on the New York Jets roster right now is John Franklin Myers. He slid outside to defensive end for the first time last year. He might be sliding back inside to defensive interior this season, but he had the only player on the roster who had enough snaps to qualify and had a pro football focus score of 80 or above a tons of pressures really good against the run had a lot of sacks earlier in the year until opponents realized he was our number one guy and started chipping him and double teaming him so the sack numbers dropped but the pressures and the run defense was still really high Uh, active hands a lot of batted down balls he had that um, crazy interception against Houston, a relentless motor, always in the right spot. And I think he's another guy where if the Jets add some more pieces around him defensively and he's not getting double teamed, his sack numbers can really, really jump. John Franklin Myers is the best Jet on the roster right now. All right, that rounds out our top 10 players on the New York Jets right now. Let me know one player you would like to be put on this list and one guy you think maybe didn't deserve a spot. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching and go Jets.